Trolloid Games. Join the fray. I forgot to comb my hair. Did I? Whatever. Who gives a shit? All right. How's it going, Grendel Wolf? How's it going, Babunski? It's been one of those two days. It's it's been it's, it's been an interesting couple of days. Uh, it's always an interesting couple of days around here. I think I begin every AMA sh with, with it's been an interesting couple of days. That means that working for Troller Games must be rather interesting. How's it going, Johnny Nomad? Grindelwolf Babunski in the house. Uh, just to confuse me as he has informed me because uh, Babunski is the same. Man, I look like some kind of crazy old man. And my camera's off. Good God, what's going on? How's it going, Commander Pete? Hadn't seen you in a while. Let me fix this madness. There we go. Let's do that. There we go. That's a little better. Jay in the house. I may have to go comb my hair, guys. This is nuts. I don't know what's going on. How's it going, poor faxer? <laughs> to get my get my A Sparky, I'm gonna have to get my hat. Here, let's let's try this. Uh, here. Can I, can I stream like this? Will this be better if I stream like this? There we go. Ah, the Stettons is the Stettons is the Stetton is no more. Stetson is no more. It is it is not with us. With us, Jesus. Okay, I can't see what's going on. It's crazy. Shouldn't be wearing a hat indoors, anyways. You look crazy, troll. Almost like those are troll dolls. Boy, it's kind of going all wonkers in every which direction. Hmm. Here, what we'll do. I got a plan. I use my drinking water to do that. How's that? That any better? Did that work? No, that didn't work at all. Man, that didn't even, that didn't even help. Ah. I can't figure out what side of the head's on. There we go. Well, that commander. Now I have to get a. I have to get a. Uh, that's a little better. I have to get a Dr. Pepper now. That just uh, that just forced my hand into getting a Dr. Pepper. <laughs> so <laughs> grease it down with Dr. Pepper. That might be a <laughs> that might be a mess. Roswell info and hair tips. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know if Dr. Pepper and hair would be a good idea. Come with your hair combed this Friday night, Steve. That's right. I'm going to be on Jay's channel Friday night. Uh, it's going to be a lot of a lot of uh, cartography discussion, so it's going to be a lot of fun. Looking forward to that. Uh, Elise is going to be on there. Elisa Faden's going to be on there. And there's another guest, Anna Myers, I think. I don't think I've ever met her. Um, is it Anna Myers? Is that right? No, that's not right. Who is it? Who's going to be the other guest? Uh, somebody. Yes, Anna Myers. There you go. Uh, I try to only allow myself one Dr. Pepper a day. I'm not supposed to have caffeine. Yeah, you got to regulate that stuff. I cut mine from having eight a day to three a day. You kind of got to, you know... What what do the old timers say? All things in moderation. That is a that is uh, and Zach Zach Glazer, good deal. That is a uh, a mantra of mine. All things in moderation. Uh, so you know, uh, it's 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 really the best way to, to to lumber through life. Anything, including moderation. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> And this is how the cool kids watch Twitch. Internet is awesome. So Tim, so Tim got fiber optics hooked up to his place at last, uh, out there on the river, uh, in the the deep dark woods of Arkansas, north north central Arkansas. Um, and so he's on fiber optics, so he can join us today and actually keep up with the stream. Uh, he was very excited uh, last week. So if we can guess, if we can just encourage whomsoever is in charge of whatsoever they are in charge of to get Davis some fiber optics, uh, they've got the, the line run out to within about 150 feet of his, of his house way out there in Northwest Arkansas, Northwest central Arkansas. And then we can get all the trolls online at a, at a pretty good pace, which would be, I don't know if that's good or not, but that's where we would be. I received in upgrade to my DSL the other day as well. Oh, that's right, Sparky, you're over there in North Eastern Arkansas. Yeah, it's good. It's 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 spreading out through the state, so that's a good thing. Uh, if we could just get it to Davis, and of course Matt Golden, 
Um, Mac is kind of in the central part of the state, but he, man, what, what's up with the trolls living in the hills? Davis is way out in the hills. Tim is way out in the hills. Uh, Mac is way out in the hills. Um, yeah, Mac sends me these beautiful sunset pictures just about every other night. Uh, of the lake that he lives on so but but he's got a horrible internet <laughs> just absolutely horrible internet i guess yeah it, everything's a trade-off in life my isp finally got fiber in my area that's excellent it's slowly spreading all over the place uh dang hill trolls yeah we're all up in the mountains shouldn't you be living under bridges <laughs> probably should probably have at one point or the other but uh, <laughs> for the moment we're just hill trolls what is that old SNL skit? Um, Mike Myers? Mike Myers did something of the hill people. Hill people. Something. Lothar of the hill people. Kadora man. <laughs> you and I must have watched the exact same television back in the 80s and 90s. <laughs> the hills are the best. I love it. Yeah, I think so, man. It's just hilarious. That was a great skit. That was actually a good crew. That was a great SNL crew. Mike Myers, John Lovitz, um, Phil Hartman. And it was just a really good and funny crew. Um, Walk with a Woman, yeah. <laughs> hey, I did hear that uh, Kids in the Hall is doing a reunion something for HBO maybe or Netflix. I'm not sure who. Uh, but Kids in the Hall will be back too. And if you've never watched Kids in the Hall, it's great stuff out of Canada. Absolutely hilarious stuff. Uh, yeah, Phil Hartman's story is, is horribly tragic. Uh, I, I think he's one of those people uh, who's genuinely, uh, was, was genuinely, a, like John Candy, just a good, kind-hearted person, uh, and, his, and his ending was, was terribly tragic when his wife, who I think, I think she was on cocaine or something, murdered him in his sleep, and just absolutely horrible. And of course, John Candy. I'm. I. He's probably my favorite comedian of all times. All time. Uh, he he passed of a, a massive coronary back in '96. I don't know, a long time ago. Um, and I love John. John Candy can do no wrong for me. I absolutely love John Candy. Oh, let's see what we got. Doodly doodly doodly. I received my big TLG Christmas order Monday. PHP is beautiful. Codex is there. It's fantastic. Sonix, that's great, Sparky. Thanks for the good word. We've been rolling those players' handbooks out and a lot of Codexes, interestingly enough, recently. So that's that's great to see that stuff get out there. And I have to say, uh, Davis called me special last week. He finally got his players' handbook in the mail, uh, and he was just beside himself with excitement. And then uh, Mac... Mac actually wrote and said, dude, I have to tell you, I'm a little emotional. This is exactly the way I, I, I wanted the book to look. So uh, the creators of the Siege Engine, those guys who brought us Castles and Crusades, well, at least the mechanic that drives it, there's a whole bunch of us that bring the game out to you, uh, were very, very happy with the, the player's handbook. So that, that, made, that made my day, and it's a good thing. I'm squishing your head. Yes, Johnny, no, <laughs> I squish your head. <laughs> my favorite skit from Kids in the Hall is... Um, what is it? The Indian drum. I've lost my drum. I've lost my Indian drum. Man, I used to say that to my kids when they were a little bitty all the time just to aggravate them. It was, I absolutely love that skit. The one guy, I found a drum. I found an Indian drum. I've been to Pea Ridge in Prairie Grove up in the northwest corner of Arkansas. It's beautiful country in the Ozarks. If you're ever out in this neck of the woods, meander through the Ozarks, both southern Missouri and northern Arkansas. It's, it's gorgeous. The Buffalo River Valley that kind of goes through north central arkansas is gorgeous just beautiful country and it's it's calm and quiet out there people are friendly it's just good country it's hard to remember having less than 200 megabyte connection no matter which state i live in been at least 15 years having a one gigabyte connection now is a treat though yeah <laughs> you know we go up to the river sometimes and, and hanging out with tim he he had some horrible internet so <laughs> so does david so uh, we get a little bit of that too too often for the trolls hard to move files around because, you know, when we started this, the files were tiny. But, like, this map here, the layered map that Peter Bradley sent over, I think it's four gigs alone, just by itself. Uh, it's, it's, gig it's just gi gigantic. Stripes is a favorite of mine. Stripes is a great movie. I gotta go with Uncle Buck, man. I, got, I have to go with Uncle Buck, uh, followed by Planes, Trains, and Automobiles, two absolutely great movies. And Uncle Buck just hit, hits it everywhere perfectly. Now, I'm about due to watch that again. It's a great Christmas movie. 
just absolutely love it. I can only imagine speeds like that. I'm lucky if I can get three megabyte down, <laughs> average about two, yeah. And there's still places, Tom Tuttle from Tacoma, that's, uh, what is that, um, Volunteers. <laughs> Volunteers is a great movie. I love the fact that he's so jingoistically American, and he's anti-communism, anti-communism, and then when he gets captured by the, the Chinese communists, he's instantly, instantly converts to communism. <laughs> it's, Tom Tuttle is one of the funniest characters he ever did. And that's John Candy from the movie Volunteers, for those who don't know. Just absolutely brilliant. I love those Goldenrod character sheets. Yes, uh, I am just a huge fan of the old Goldenrod, and now we, of course, have brought them back for the Castles and Crusades, uh, eighth printing release that began last week. I did a bidding test to the whore of my girlfriend. <laughs> when I, I think I missed some binding test. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we have had, and to let those of you know who have picked up the Monsters and Treasures uh, with the Player's Handbook or the Castle Keeper's Guide, we've had a few binding issues with it. Uh, if you happen to, we're trying to screen them as they go out, but sometimes they get past us. Uh, if you happen to get one that the binding's messed up, just give us a shout. We'll, we'll take care of you right quick, so don't worry about that. Just got my player's handbook today. It's beautiful. Yeah, Obsidian, thank you for that. I'm so stoked on that book. Uh, Johnny LaRue and Dr. Tongue. Yep, nobody home. You know, if we do this all month, we won't have to pay rent because nobody home. <laughs> I'm not sure which one that one's from, but Bear Crawl. A bear Crawl is a dangerous animal. There you, okay. <laughs> the Great Outdoors with John Candy. There you go. I was just about to think was filmed in Bass Lake, California, just outside the Yosemite South Gate. That's very cool, and that's a very good movie. He did he did a beach one, too, didn't he? There was The Great Outdoors, and then there was something he did on the beach. And, of course, he passed away while he was filming Westward Ho, I think. Uh, John Candy is just, was uh, just brilliant. And he was just, from everything that I saw, just a kind, Wagons East, there you go. It was just a kind-hearted just a kind-hearted person. I mean, he you, you never heard anything bad about him. He's never in the, you know, the tabloids doing whatever he did, but uh, um, he's just good, just good person. And he's from Canada. I think people from Canada are just good people. The CNC tree and book sets with the new covers look so damn good on the table. They really do. I'm so stoked on these things. I wish the screens would arrive uh, so we would... Summer Rental, that's the one I was thinking of. <laughs> I enjoyed Summer Rental. Uh he's just funny he's just kind of this he's so understated on screen um i don't know and, and it, it, there's no like chris farley who i love chris farley but chris farley kind of centered his comedy around his own physicality but john candy really didn't his physicality was just there and he was a comedian uh you know apart from that which was i don't know it was just really cool and he's so he's so wholesome in his delivery of everything that he did uh that, uh, that i don't know i don't know I, I cannot sing enough praise about john candy there have been two celebrity deaths that that have you know i, I had an emotional reaction to and it's john candy and steve Irwin. uh both both the others are great there's a great celebrities all over the place but um i love john candy movies and steve Irwin was just he was just the guy, right? I mean, he was <laughs> he was the animal guy of all animal guys. I need to frame the maps with Monsters of Air and, and Codex now. They look good on the wall. They definitely look good on the wall. Canadian Bacon on his last films pitted Canada versus the U.S. <laughs> One of his last films, yep. I love John Candy's Neighbor in the Summer Rental, just saying. <laughs> it's a good movie. If you haven't seen Summer Rental, it, it's, just, it's just fun. And I get that one mixed up with The Great Outdoors. They're kind of almost the same movie. Uh, just it's just good stuff. I love John Candy and the rest of the Second City cast. My emotional one is Robin Williams. Robin Williams is hard. I'm a huge. I just Robin Williams was borderline genius. I think in his delivery, because um, he could he could carry almost any thought into a comedic element, and that's that's not easy to do. It's easy to be sarcastic with it. It's easy to make fun of things. It's easy to do all of that, but to actually turn something. Uh, just about anything mundane thing into into humor uh, without you know relying upon sarcasm or whatever I think it's not not that easy to do and John and Robin Williams was was a past master at that um, he, he of course you know he passed away three years ago maybe four years ago I'm not sure when he passed away but it was relatively recently uh, and we lost a good one to John Candy I mean he did not John Candy uh, Robin Williams what was his uh, toy toys toys was one of my favorite movies I loved I loved Robin Williams and toys but I'm gonna have to go with um, 
shit, what is his, um, what's his vacation movie where he's in the RV? It was one of the later movies. Um, is it RV? Yeah, it's called RV, right? I think it's called RV. Uh, RV, I think that's the name of that movie. It was If you've never watched RV yet, just go watch the movie tonight. It is, it is, it is brilliant. It's beautiful. It's just a great, it's just a great movie. I remember Robin Williams. Oh, wait. Robin Williams and Jonathan Winters on the Carson Show. Yeah, I don't remember seeing Jonathan Winters. Oh, I know who Jonathan Winters is. Yeah, he was that kind of low-key, uh, a little bit sarcastic comedian, if I remember Jonathan Winters. Uh, Steve Irwin was great, but you have to give it to to give it up for Jim, as in Jim will wrestle the alligator. <laughs> That's from, uh, is that Mutual of Omaha? Is that because I watched Mutual of Omaha as a kid on Saturday, Saturday afternoons, maybe Saturday nights? I can't remember when that came on. Maybe Saturday mornings. Uh, Mutual of Omaha was was just <laughs> was just a great show, uh, but Steve Irwin took all of that and carried it. Wild King, Mutual, Mutual of Omaha's Wild Kingdom. That's what that was. Yeah, I remember Mutual of Omaha is the, is the insurance company, but it was Mutual of Omaha's Wild Kingdom, as I recall it. There you go. <laughs> I forgot all about Jim. The old guy would be in the studio, I guess, and Jim would be out there wrestling the alligators or whatever he would be doing. Reading PHB closely, magic resistance is a pure chance of spell failure not related to caster level, which is direct. It's different than when he was that intentional. Yes. Um, when Mac and Davis put all of that together, Thomcat, it's... Um, it just gives it a chance, you know, um, that whatever magic resistance you have can overcome the ability of the spellcaster. And it just gives it a little bit of chance, which is nice when you're fighting like a... How's it going, Bifford? When you're fighting like a 26-level wizard because uh, the chances of you making your saber are low, very low. Norm MacDonald is someone I didn't appreciate his humor enough until it was too late. Yeah, I love Norm MacDonald. I really... He was... <laughs> he had such a dry sense of humor. I loved Norm, but his was definitely it was it was definitely dry. You had to kind of you kind of had to shift gears into Norm Norm McDonald, uh, and he was I don't know I I love Norm. I, he and he was part of that crew with uh, Mike Myers and John Lovitz and that whole I'm, I'm missing one of them. Uh, who was the Steve Miller? No, nope, that's a musician. Dennis Miller. Dennis Miller is another really great one from that crew. I uh, absolutely love Norm McDonald. I just watched uh, Low Key. I just watched. I don't know what that means. Oh, stuff Low Key. I don't have. Any, I can't watch any of that stuff because I don't have Disney. <laughs> so I canceled Disney a few months back, so I can't watch anything on with Star Wars or uh, whatever the hell it is, uh, the Marvel Universe. I'm, I'm falling woefully behind, and I'm behind on the Expanse too, which I'm going to have to get caught up on. Uh, yes, Norm was absolutely brilliant. Uh, Let's see, Robin Williams was interviewed by 60 Minutes, and they went to Jonathan Winter's home. They riffed off of each other, jumping from character to character, and Bradley let them, left them still going strong. It was great. <laughs> That's cool. That would be great to watch. Now, who is, now, Robin Williams' is good friend, gamer friend, actually, who's the guy from uh, When Harry Met Sally? Um, and, uh, shit. All right, someone help me out here. Um, the Beatles documentary on Disney. <laughs> Billy Billy Crystal, yeah, absolutely love Bill Crystal. Billy Crystal was another great one from that that time period. And, and when Harry Met Sally is one of my favorite movies, I absolutely love. As rom coms go, that one takes the cake. Uh, it's just it's just a good movie. And of course, he dates way back to um, Soap, the uh, that evening show that kind of made fun of soaps. And I think he may have played the first gay character on TV. I think that was just great stuff. Absolutely great stuff. Steve, several fans in the Discord server have asked about Star Siege and when we might expect to see it. Soft cover thoughts. Yes, I can answer that. Uh, yeah, Soap was actually awesome. So Star Siege got um, delayed because I don't know if I brought this up last week. I can't remember. We had a. We finally. This is our second kind of shortage that we are suffering from. Whatever is going on in the broader scope of things, um, we ran out. Of, we have not run out of paper, but we're down to a couple of months' supply of paper. Uh, and it's looking like it's more closer to a month's supply of paper. And uh, Star Siege is, a, I think it's a 110-page book, so it's going to eat up a lot of paper for us to do 100 copies of that. It's going to eat up a good chunk of paper. So I delayed it until we can get paper in, and I make sure that we have enough to cover uh, restocking for regular adventures and modules and stuff that's already out, especially with the Player's Handbook just having hit. Now, that said, the good news is we found some paper in New Jersey uh, on Thursday or Friday, and we placed an order. 
theoretically, though I have not gotten the, the shipping email, theoretically it shipped yesterday. We should have it to tomorrow and Thursday. And once that lands, once and it'll be about another three month supply of paper. Once that lands and we get it, you know, happily stored away, uh, then I'll revisit Star Siege. Uh, probably won't make it out by Christmas. Um, theoretically, the screens will land next week, and that's going to eat up shipping time for the next in and around the, the time period around Christmas. So uh, probably uh, the Star Siege, assuming that paper arrives, and I'm confident that it will. Star Siege will will be released first week of January, and we'll we'll couple that with uh, M3 and M4, which which M3 is definitely done and ready to go to print, and M4 Chuck Babunski. I know we've got the maps for right, uh, right Chuck, Chuck. Uh, most comedians were our gamers. Oh, that's kind of interesting. I did not know that. Uh, I knew the two uh, Billy and Robin Williams played. I think they played Warhammer together. Gene Wilder and Young Frankenstein in classic comedy. Gene Wilder is, is brilliant. Uh, and Young Frankenstein has to be probably his best movie. I, you know, he did a whole bunch of movies, but Young Frankenstein's probably Gene, in my opinion, is, uh, is have you called Dunder Mifflin? That became a joke between Todd and I as we scoured the entire, every everything west or east of Arkansas for paper, and everybody was out. I mean, and nothing in Illinois and Tennessee and... Uh, down in Louisiana, just couldn't find anything. And there's paper mills all over Arkansas. My cousin works at a paper mill. Uh, in fact, he manages the paper mill. But um, down in Pine Bluff, Arkansas. Uh, yeah, we gotta. Yeah. So, well, what this means is, of course, as soon as that lands, we're gonna place another order, and just so that we can get we can get enough of this stuff uh, stocked up. All right, let me turn that ringy dingy ding ding off. There you go. Uh, yeah, because we got to be stocked up all the time. Uh, sure. Yeah, yeah. I, I forgot to ask you for those at the end of uh, November, Chuck. So, <laughs> so look for an email from me in the morning or a Skype from me in the morning. Yes, much better, <laughs> much better, Tomcat, uh, than Willy Wonka. It's a good movie. Willy Wonka is a good movie. Uh, what knockers? No, it's the it, for for me on the. On the, 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 the young Frankenstein, it's that putting on the Ritz scene. That that scene is borderline genius. They almost struck it from the movie, um, uh, and it got put in. And it's just it, it's it's just a border. It's just brilliant. I'm not a map addict. <laughs> we are all map addicts, <laughs> Sparky. We can be like Spartacus and all stand up. We are map addicts. I heard it was encouraged in various classes for improv. Oh, I missed something there, Pat. I'm not sure what uh, <laughs> what I talked about or what you talked about. Oh, the gamers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that could be. I wouldn't doubt it at all because that certainly helps you because when you're gaming, especially role-playing, you got to respond to all kinds of stuff that, you know, well, it's sort of like real life, right? People say things to you. you got to figure out what, you're, what the hell you're supposed to say. Get more of those new PHBs and stuff. Sounds like it's going fast. It's moving very fast. We're very happy with it. I'm very curious. I think it's going to be... I think it's going to be a slow build in distribution. And that's what I, I honestly believe that uh, CNC has been around for so long now, 16 years, that uh, retailers don't pick it up as something new. You know, you always want the new new and shiny thing. So I think this is going to go out. Uh, much like the, the original first printing of the Player's Handbook, the distributor that I work with, uh, he called me, the consolidator that I worked with called me and said, hey, I, I need 100 copies of this. And I was like, dude, dude, you're going to sell so many more copies of this than that. Don't, don't start with that 100 copy crap. I wanted to send him a thousand just to get him started. Uh, we we negotiated. To, I think it's like three fifty, maybe three hundred. I can't remember now. I think it's three fifty, uh, and that's what we shipped to him. And then after the first weeks of sales, which means by Wednesday, really, uh, he was on the phone saying, "Hey, I need more. I need more players' handbooks. How many do you got?" So uh, I'm I'm thinking that this is going to be kind of a slow burn in the retail market. Um, but it's going to keep carrying on as as more of you guys get it and show it on Facebook and Twitter and and Discord and wherever. Uh, get the word out. I think it's going to it's going to make a splash. How's it going, Epi? Glad you could join us. Genuinely don't know. Are there CNC stuffs on Roll Twenty or other VTT? So Hagger the Horrible, yes and no. Um, so Chuck and I had a meeting about that. As soon as as soon as that paper shortage hit TLG, I got Chuck on the phone. Because he's kind of heading up the VTT side of things, um, and I'll give you a real, a real quick recap from what we settled on last week. 
uh, what's going forward and what's happening. Uh, so on Fantasy Grounds, we should be releasing the new rule set the first week of the year. Uh, it'll come with the Player's Handbook, the Monsters and Treasures, and C1, and then we're going to release the C-Series after that. Uh, so we'll start flooding Fantasy Grounds with content very, very soon. Uh, as for Roll20, uh, we we have uh, brought someone on board. Actually, one of our editors has begun creating the character sheet for that. We're hoping to have that done by no later than the middle of January, but it may be later in January to have the character sheet done. And once the character sheet's done up for Roll20, we can get content up there as well. So we'll start moving CNC stuff there very rapidly, hopefully by mid-January to February. Uh, for Shard, uh, we are working with uh, Hal over there at Shard to get more. It'll be more D20 stuff to begin with, but we'll begin working on the rule set relatively soon. And uh, we were going to have a meeting. I think I completely dropped the ball on Andrea. We were going to have a meeting for a foundry uh, this week. Chuck, I completely dropped the ball on that. Um, we need to reach out. I'll reach out to him after this stream um, to get us on the Foundry as well. So lots of lots of things going on in the VTT side of things. So hopefully in the next six weeks, you will have a, a much larger pool to, to look at to whatever direction you want to go into the VTT environment with Castles and Crusades. You'll be able to do so. That is the plan with a focus on Fantasy Grounds and Roll20 kind of comparable there. One of my favorite Leslie Nielsen lines, and I, you know, I can't say that on Twitch. <laughs> my dad loved the, what was it, the Naked Gun movies. Absolutely loved those. The horse whinnying every time someone mentions Frau Blucher <laughs> gets me every time. <laughs> it's a great movie. How's it going, Steven? How's it going, Sinkle? Shinkai, I, I mess your name up every time. Okay, so what happened to Black Tentacles? I didn't see it. It's the news player's handbook. Um... What did I do? I thought I, I thought I kept that picture in there. Now you're talking about the illusionist that's holding. Uh, I, I think that's what you're talking about. <laughs> it's got the tentacles. I thought I kept that in there. But I may not have. I got a couple of pictures at the end that I super liked, and I swapped some out. So that may have been that, that may have been what happened to that one. I'm not sure. Henry Cavill, Witcher, Superman is a Warhammer player. I heard that. And Witcher's actually, if you haven't watched the Witcher series. The first episode for me was a little bland, I gotta say. But almost every TV show I watch, it's hard for me to get in the first episode. Because it's not as good as whatever I just finished watching. Um, and, but The Witcher caught on real quick. It's a great show, so I would definitely recommend that. Showed mine off at Sunday's Game, and two people were talking about buying it. Excellent, Max Caladin. That's what we need. I think just spreading the word out there, letting people see it. If they can see it, get a good idea of it, uh, it'll go a lot further. And we're talking about the 8th printing of the Player's Handbook, of course. He also just built his computer for the first time. Uh, previous computers were pre-built. I have to place my PHP order soon, getting three for my group. Uh, excellent. Well, Statler, I'm going to put... I, I thought we did this yesterday. There's so many little things that we're missing. Um, I'm going to... Uh, we'll, we'll have that five by five. I know you only want three, but we'll have... Five, if you get five, you get one for free. We'll, that'll be up on the, on the site here pretty soon. Tim, if you're out there listening, would you make a note of that? Uh, we need to get that up. We need to get the digital copy of the new uh, character reference sheets up. We need to get the, the digital copy of the, the PSD of the Monsters and Treasures thing so we can get that over to Noble Dwarf. Ah, uh, we got so much crap to do. My question is this. Did you sign that thing I sent you? <laughs> no, I hadn't signed anything. <laughs> Can't go far. <laughs> I haven't looked at it, man. I'm, I keep forgetting. I know I downloaded it. Uh, and I'm ass deep into the NPC Almanac uh, at this point. Uh, and I'm really, I'm trying not to do anything until I get this these two volumes done. This has turned into a 500-page book, uh, two books. We've had to split it into two books. It's just been, it's been a challenge uh, to get this thing, you know, uh, hounded together. So it soon, hopefully by the new year, all this will be done. All this will be put to bed. Uh, and we can we can move on to new projects. That is though. Does Roll Twenty content include PHP and MNT? So Pondream, I I don't think that's Chuck. You're gonna have to weigh in here. I don't think that's how that works. I think that the character sheet has everything that you need on it, and then you you would purchase the the digital copy of the player's handbook and use that to fill out your player's handbook. I think. Uh, but but please, someone out there, correct me if that's if that is incorrect. I can't afford to move off uh, of Roll20, and I'm starting my CNC game next Sunday. Well, hopefully, maybe we'll have it done by next week. I don't think so, but <laughs> maybe. Cool to hear about Roll20. I have a pro account there. Yeah, we're really, uh, and that's on that's on me. I didn't understand what was needed over there. If I did, uh, then we would have moved on this this sooner. But but uh, now is the now is the soon. So we're going to get this done uh, very very quickly. 
I have two groups that would play C and see if it was available in Foundry, and that's excellent. And that's we're also, like I said, we're talking to them too. So we're really pushing into the VTT this uh, this paper shortage thing. Uh, it it, it kind of caught me off guard. I gotta say, uh, a lot of those of you who have followed Trollhead Games from the beginning, from way back to two thousand. Uh, we've done a pretty good job of managing the pandemic and the shortages and the delays and all that stuff. We bought deep way back in 2020, and we continue to buy deep throughout. We ran out of packaging bo- two-inch boxes once, I think, you know, sometime last year. But this is the first time that it actually, uh, I wasn't able to anticipate what was coming. Or rather, I didn't anticipate, what I really didn't anticipate was the, the increased sales. There was an increased sales volume that ate the paper faster than I anticipated. And even with the extra that I had bought, it went through that. So, uh, and that that sent just alarm bells up. Um, and I got with Chuck and Tim and everybody so we could figure out what what we can do to alleviate uh, pressure on the game tables out there uh, if we can't print certain things. And obviously, VTT rolled right up to the very, very forefront. That PDFs, but the VTT as well, because so many people, especially younger gamers, are, are using this, these platforms to run their games, and that's that's fantastic. Uh, so, so it really, uh, it, it's it's a it's a ball that needed to roll down that mountain, and it's uh, and that <laughs> that spook of a paper shortage spooked me enough that it's uh, it's rolling now. Uh, I've been I've been faking CNC on Foundry. There you go. Black Tentacles was the spell that summoned a bunch of tentacles to crush and slow down enemies. It was nasty because it could strangle a whole group of monsters to death. <laughs> that would be a very cool spell. Was it an illusionist spell? Um, where is that from? Is that an old AD and D spell? A lot of a lot of the spells in Castles and Crusades are carried over from Dungeons and Dragons, uh, and we brought these over so that everybody who plays D and D, of course, will be very very comfortable when they when they settle into the player's handbook. Uh, and begin playing. What the hell's on my my bloody glasses here? Good Lord of mercy. Lord of mercy. Have the seventh printing would like the eighth, but PNP to UK is always as kill. It really is, man. You gotta get so don't order one thing. If you if you're ordering to Europe, don't order one thing because it's a the one thing's gonna cost you like forty five dollars and if you add four or five things to it, it's gonna only jump it up to, to sixty. Now reach out to us, Bifford, because I think I, I can't remember if I explained this or not, but our shipping module that we use cannot or does not um, work with the Global Post, who we ship uh, overseas with, and we get a very substantial discount from Global Post. So we what we end up doing is someone from the UK or France or whatever orders, and we end up refunding 20 bucks or whatever it is uh, because it, it charges them on the front end. And then, of course, we got... We got extra money for shipping. We don't want to overcharge for shipping, so we, we just contact whoever bought it and send it back to him. So, so reach out to us. Give Tim a holler. We can look at it and see if it's a little bit, but but always order. Try to get, I think it's over four pounds. It might be five pounds. I can't remember. It's somewhere around that four or five pounds. But if you get the Player's Handbook and the Monster Book then and the CKG, you're, you're, you're golden. I mean, you're over, the, you're over the thing. And then it doesn't jump up again until you get to like 15 pounds. And then it's like... Crazy expensive, like 100. That's just ridiculous. And just to let everybody know, because I like to bring depressing news to everybody. Uh, from what I understand, that the post office is fixing to raise rates again on the 26th of December. I don't know what rates those are. I don't know if it's just priority, if it's media, or if it's overseas. I have no idea. That little pop up just popped up on my thing the other day, and I don't know why I keep doing this. I'm not. I'm not sure what that means, but <laughs> but that whatever that is. Uh, there you go. Well, Haunted Highlands campaign detail be coming to Fantasy Grants. First, we got to get, I got, that's one of those things that we talk about it about once every other week. We got to get, I got to sit down with Casey Christofferson. That's his IP, his intellectual property, and I got to, and I'm, I'm, I know he'll let us continue publishing it, but we got to get it back into print, back into all of these platforms so we can get it back up onto VTT. I know Casey would be just uh, tickled pink to see that happen, so hopefully, hopefully in the new year. The codex based on Korea have a section about zombies, as in the show Kingdom. I, you know, he turned over the manuscript yesterday, but I haven't seen it, so I don't know. I will say this, Blood Wild, that show Kingdom is fantastic. If you have not watched it and you enjoy zombies even a little bit, watch Kingdom. It's a medieval Korean kingdom uh, and this zombie plague, sort of. I don't want to give anything away. It's very, it's a, it's a new and different take on it. It was very cool. Uh, and then they did a prequel to it. I don't know if you saw that Blood Wild. There's a prequel movie out now. Uh, just it's just fantastic. Loved it. 
And I hope they have a season three. I think they got two seasons. I hope they have a third season now. Yes, that is what I'm referring to, having a CNC compendium on Roll20. I believe that's how that works. Character sheet centric. We will, we will if sales allow for it. Okay, there you go. That's Chuck there. Sheets are usually available while compendiums books are purchased. Okay, so there you go. Uh, so that's what we're working on the thing. Eighth printing or busy or bust. Yep, absolutely. Uh, speaking of the Codex series, I thought I remembered hearing about a Codex Mesopotamia. Am I mistaken? You are not. So I talked to Brian yesterday. He turned over Codex Cenarum. Is that how you pronounce that? The Latin, that's the Chinese mythologies. And then we'll have the Codex Corian, which is Korea. Uh, and then he's going to do Mongolia Scythia. Uh, and then he's going to do Mesopotamia. So he's so two of them he's done. He's going to start working on... on uh, he's already started working on Scythia. He figures about four or five months to get that done, and then he'll jump into to Mesopotamia. And I don't know where we're going from there, but I'm sure there'll be more. So Mesopotamia is maybe next year. Uh, who knows? He's already got the two done, so we'll be rolling out. Uh, we'll, I'll get the Codex in arm into editing, and we'll get that thing rolling pretty soon. Uh, can you find me a new group? My current don't get CNC and want me to run the campaign in five e. <laughs> you got you just trick them, man. Set the set the set the DMZ screens up. Get your CNC stuffs behind there, and just have them making attribute checks, and just slowly bleed. Allow them to make checks, attribute checks for abilities they don't have. And as they slowly do this over time, this is how I got Todd to play it. As they do this over time, they they'll. It'll just kind of sink in that they're playing a different game than what they have been playing. That's how I got Todd off of AD and D, and onto Castles and Crusades. I just kind of, I just kind of tricked him. <laughs> it's because he's a huge AD and D fan. So was I. But Evard's Black Tentacles. Yes. Okay, I do remember that spell. How did that get cut out? Man, that's odd that that got cut out. Because that's I do remember. Now that you say Evard's Black Tentacles, that makes sense. Um, why do I have to ask Mac uh, Shinkai? That's interesting. Uh, you know, Mac. Mac did that. Mac and Davis created the Siege Engine, the mechanic that drives Castles and Crusades. And then we all wrote chunks of it. Any part of the player's handbook that you see is kind of a how-to. I probably wrote that. Anything that's rules-related, Mac or Davis wrote that. Uh, and all of the spells, Mac took those and converted. So that huge section in the middle, that was Mac Golden. Um, you see, Mac Golden pops up in the screen, in the in the, the feed sometimes now and again. He's I'm surprised he had today. He's heading home about right now. But um, uh, I'll, have to, I'll have to ask him. I don't know why that, that spell is cut. That's very interesting. Um, very, very interesting. Because it all comes from, and because I, I guarantee you, he brought a lot of this stuff over and he, he tailored it to fit, to, to, fit, to fit the games I run because I, I run most of the games and he wanted this stuff from AD&D that, that he, shot, he thought should be played this way or it should read this way or it should do this. He rewrote the spell so that it worked the way he wanted it to at the table, which is nothing short of brilliant, because uh, I didn't care. And uh, uh, so that's what we got. So I'm, I'm surprised he could. There may have been a legal reason. There was a few spells we ran into that that we couldn't do for this reason or that reason. I don't know. I didn't ask many questions. I just I just laid the book out. I told him actually I didn't even do that. Peter Bradley did that. I told my players that I'd play 5e, but I won't run it. I'm the only GMS, so they'd rather play CNC than run. <laughs> There you go. That's the way to do it. <laughs> you just kind of force them into it. Y'all really referenced the Arkansas Razorbacks in the Wild Boar entry in M&T. <laughs> yes, we did. Uh, one of my favorite entries is in the M&T is the, um, gosh, what is that swamp monster thing at the back? Uh, I can't remember which one it is, but you'll see that you have to talk to water ecologist Sarah Clem because she plays at our table and she is a water ecologist. Um, and she, <laughs> she kept every time I would describe water environments rivers or ponds or lakes or whatever she would correct my language <laughs> she would she would fix shambling bound check out the shambling bound entry she would she would fix what i was saying it was quite funny um and, and so i put in the shambling mound description i i put you got to check with the, with the water ecologist Sarah Clem before you can run this monster or something i can't remember what i put in there is the crusader journey omnibus in print coming soon you know, we we need to print that. I think we actually owe people that. I think from way back when. I'm not sure. Oh, you might remember that. Now you've been around long enough. Um, but yeah, we we need to. I need to talk. I don't even know where that is. I don't even know. I, I know Chuck and Tim handle that stuff, so I'm not even sure where. I don't even know if they handle that stuff. Someone other than me handles that stuff. So it would be great to get that thing in print. To be honest with you, can I just drive down and get curbside pickup? There you go. <laughs> we'll toss it in the. We'll open up a drive-through outside. 
That's why flags are so important. We don't pay for posters when you buy from them, not overtly. Yeah, it, no, you're right. If it, And we're selling 5th edition very well into, our 5th edition line sells very well into the retail market. However, the CNC has been around so long, it's not a new item anymore. So they don't carry it as deep. Uh, and some of the stuff they just don't carry. So CNC is a little bit harder to get a hold of for that reason. Uh, it always gets a little, it's a little dicey. We do what we can. We change the stock codes and ISBNs to help. But even that doesn't really that doesn't that doesn't cinch it for a lot of retailers, and I don't blame them. Retailers have to lay a lot of money down, uh, you know, to get this product in, and then they have to wait for someone to come buy it. So uh, we try to we try to help the retail shops out as much as we humanly can. I do appreciate overseas gamers that deal with high shipping rates instead of just getting digital versions. I always prefer physical copies. Yeah, I gotta you gotta appreciate them a little bit more because a lot of these countries have VAT taxes too, so they get that not only do they have to pay the high shipping. But they get hammered with a VAT, and it's um, sometimes that VAT. If you order like a player's handbook, uh, sometimes the VAT's more than than you paid for the player's handbook. It gets it gets a little crazy. Um, so I don't know. It's a uh, it's an interesting world. We we have explored other options like printing overseas. I mean, in Europe, having a, a a POD. My biggest problem with that is is every POD I've run into, the binding is not good, and then we start selling books that aren't aren't bound well, and that's that's a, a huge thing on me. I don't I don't like to, to ship books that aren't bound well. That's why the Monsters and Treasures that kind of got goofed up has been a, a bit of a sticking point with us. Codex Canadia and <laughs> after those, there you go. That's what I'm talking about. The new Kickstarter PHB players archive and character sheets arrive in great shape and look great. Good deal, Lex Fire. I'm super stoked on those things. I'm so happy about that player's handbook and the character sheets. The, the archive's a great book, but it's you know more of an, an archival book. But uh, that player's handbook was just so stoked on. Glad you got yours and glad they showed up in intact. Great news on the codexes. Yeah, I'm super <laughs> codex Antarctica. There you go, codex North America. So I don't think we're going to do a Native American uh, codex. Uh, there's so many practitioners of of the variety of religions that are interwoven into the is it 600 and something nations in North America, I think. Uh, but we may do a Mesoamerican. Uh, so I'll sit down and talk to Davis, and uh, Davis actually did his anthropological studies in, in Mesoamerica. So I'll, I'll talk to Davis and Brian about that. Um, but I think the Native American we're going to, we're going to, we're just not going to do. Uh, I think that would be a little bit presumptuous and a little rude. Uh, they would not fall for that. Da, da, da. Wait, I thought they had to trick you off AD&D. Todd needed to be tricked too. Oh yeah, no, it, they didn't trick me off AD&D. They told me they wouldn't play anymore if I didn't run CNC. So Castles and Crusades came out in 2005. Into 2006, we were still playing AD&D. And Mag and Davis said, look, we know you love AD&D. That's great. But you've got to play, you've got to try Castles and Crusades. It's a really good game. It's selling really well. Everybody loves it. And if you don't, if you don't play it at least once, then we're just gonna stop playing. So, <laughs> so they blackmailed me basically. They, uh, so I played it, and the first time I played it, I thought, this is pretty cool. And then so we kept playing it, and within about I think it's about maybe six games. I remember texting Mac or calling Mac, or we were neighbors at the time. I may just wandered down there and, and telling him, dude, this thing is this thing is fantastic. It does absolutely everything I want it to do. It had that, that that siege engine mechanic covers every style that I whatever I'm shifting into, uh, and allows me to say to the players, yes, you can try that. And now I have a mechanic that's easy and simple and fast to to, to let them do it. So, uh, so I, I switched and I never looked back. I don't ever I never I think I played AD and D maybe twice uh, since then. But Todd, on the other hand, he really didn't want to play CNC. He did because the rest of us did, but where he would not play. Uh, CNC at all was with the uh, the Advanced Dungeons and Dragons, the big game that we played for 15, 20 years or whatever the hell that was. We started back in 1984, uh, and that one is the one that I bled him over. Uh, I just kept introducing it, you know, and so <laughs> so it slowly until he realized, is this are we just playing Castles and Crusades at this point? It was it was really kind of funny. So now we play CNC both ways, but uh, <laughs> yeah, Todd was not amused. Evarch Black Tentacles might have been changed over to Dark Chaos and Major Dark Chaos, though the spells don't do the same things, but stylistically, sort of, that may be. I'll have to ask Mac. That's very interesting. Real question, how do you handle fulfillment on Kickstarters? I know there are fulfillment centers out there, but they aren't cheap. I mean, y'all have a workshop, so that probably makes it easier. I ask because I live in third-story apartment and don't want a pallet of books showing up, up there. Yeah, that's, well... Two sides to that. If the Kickstarter is small, we'll do it in-house. Uh, and by small, I don't mean size of, of what we're releasing, but the 
uh, the number of items in the Kickstarter. So take the screens that we just did. It's just screens. We didn't add any pledge rewards. We didn't add any stretch rewards. We didn't add any of that stuff. It's just not pledge rewards. Stretch rewards, or there's two pledges and no stretch rewards. So one box is going to have the screens. One box is going to have the screens and three books and the character reference sheets, I think. Line on the ropes, maybe. Uh, whatever. Um, that stuff we'll do in-house. The mailroom can more than handle that. It's very, very easy. The problem breaks down. We've done a lot of them in-house where we manage all of it, and you can do that. The problem breaks down in where you, how you track what you have shipped to whom. So split shipments, uh, and when you've got to break things out for media mail and priority and parcel, it gets really kind of confusing. So what we do for, what we normally do is backer kit. They offer you a number of options. I think it's three or four options for how much you want to pay for how much they the services they deliver. So they're, they're pretty good. And they have a, a great help desk. If you've got any problems, backer kit gets a hold of you. You know, you get a hold of them really quick and they answer really quick. So uh, I super love backer kit and they'll work with you. So I would recommend backer kit to help you out with that. Uh, and then inexplicably, her character drowned across the river. <laughs> yeah, I should have drowned that character at some point, but it was really kind of funny. The big one was muck. I just remember the muck. I described this whole river environment, and I had muck in there, and she kept saying, Steve, there's, there's no muck in rivers. I was like, what? I finally, I finally stopped. Saying, what are you talking about, Sarah? You can't have muck in rivers. Muck is accumulated, blah, 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 blah. And rivers have blah, 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 blah. They're defined by it. So silt, maybe not. I can't remember. It was such, it was so funny. It's like talking to a chemist or anybody else who's a specialty in their, in their field. She knew <laughs> she knew her science, and she went with it, and she explained it to me, and I can only remember <laughs> a tenth of it. But it certainly earned her a place in the, <laughs> in the player's handbook. All right, the Monsters and Treasures. So in the eighth printing, high-level play was moved from the CKG to the PHB. Was curious what the mo- motive was for that. I always assumed it was extended play. Some of the multi-classing rules, I suppose, that it wasn't given that the CK was using it. Yeah, that's... You kind of nailed it. So for those of you who don't know, the Castle Keeper's Guide, um, which we just released, the third printing of the Castle Keeper's Guide, that's this sucker here. Uh, it had uh, the character levels for the the main characters in the player's handbook from 14th to 24th level and the reason that we did that is mac and davis designed castles and crusades to kind of cap out at 13th level which is a great idea in you know philosophical round tables but it's not a great idea at the table because no one wants to quit at 13th level so uh later i created the uh, expanded classes their abilities and whatnot and we put it in the castle keepers guide as an optional rule for those people who wanted to carry the game on fast forward five years or six years or whatever however long the ckg has been in print i think since 2015 so fast forward about six years and we've had enough feedback from enough people that everybody wanted it i mean i think bar i think we've had one or two people say they didn't want it so if you look the way we put it in the player's handbook we pull it out of the ckg we put it in the player's handbook but we divided it so if you don't want that uh, it's in the second if if it's in the second half of the class entry, um, so it like so the monk. I'm looking at the monk right now. You've got two pages on the monk, and then the next page is the monk level monk high level progression. And so if you want to carry it on, here's your high level. And if you don't, if you want to stop it at 13th, stop it at 13th and move on. But we felt it was just it was too much. It was really difficult at our table now because they're at 15th, 16th, 17th level at this point. We constantly have to open CKG to read the abilities that they have, and that's just, it's just not cool. Uh, so the player's handbook is, is really where it belonged. Uh, and when we do the second printing of the Adventures backpack, we will, all of that stuff will be uh, those 13 classes, or 12, whatever, I don't know, 14, uh, whatever is in the Adventures backpack, they too will be extended uh, so that you'll have everything right there at your fingertips. I've also decided, just here's a, an announcement for the, the stream. Uh, I've decided to shut down the book Mystical Companions. I'm gonna I'm gonna rewrite that myself. Uh, I don't I don't really. It's too complicated. Uh, Mystical Companions is a book that allows you to play any class and have familiars. So you can be a fighter, and this is your dog or whatever it is. Uh, I think there's like a shadow for the thief and whatnot. It was written originally written for D20. It was converted to Castles and Crusades, and many of its Many of the machinations were carried over from D20 that made it a little bit more complicated than I want it to be. So I'm going to go through that. 
and I'm going to clean Mystical Companions out. I'm going to cancel that title. And I'm going to weave it into the Adventures Backpack. So you're going to have familiars for all classes in the Adventures Backpack, but it's going to be a greatly condensed section uh, that makes it. It's just going to be much more streamlined. Our target date for a roll 20 CNC character sheet is, is New Year's Eve, give or take a month. <laughs> there you go. The worst is small item shipping, though. I recently had a print-on-demand book shipped, shipped to me. It cost less than three, three, three bucks, but I was slapped with a $15 processing fee and tax. Yeah, it's just absolutely ridiculous. Shipping overseas is crazy. Print-on-demand, even not that I've been anything against print-on-demand. It's a quality issue with me. Too bad you can't open your own printing company overseas. That would be ideal. I love the high-level play options in the new PHB. I see you gave the monk a lot of love. No dead levels at all. I want to give you a big kudos on the new player's archive as well. I think that is a must-have resource, even if you own all of the supplements it contains, because it's excellent for quickly working through character class options. Thank you for, thank you for that. Uh, and that's really what that the archive is all about. It was I don't think I have a copy handy. Uh, no, I don't. What we did with the archive is we took all the character classes from the player's handbook, from the adventures backpack, from Amazing Adventures, and from something else. I can't remember what else. There's <laughs> something else. So that, um, what the hell was that? Hallowed Oracle's Player's Guide. So that you'd have all of these classes together in one spot, along with the multi-classing and with the class and a half and something else. Mark Sandy, I noticed he slipped into the player's archive that I didn't know. It's, a, it's another class building uh, thing, which is really cool. So, so for those of you who want to build your own class, the player's archive really has that content in there that you can just build your own class, which is a lot of fun because that's what most of the players at my table do. They just take elements of the existing classes and roll with it, and it really makes it, it just makes it fun. And thank you for that, Shinkai. And I still want to get on your YouTube channel. That'd be great. Uh, sit down and, and have a, uh, a chat. That would be fantastic. Also, feedback for the codexes is to make the books more playable, more gameable information, like how various classes fit into the world which aren't appropriate, and, and any altered features, also equipment, currency, etc. You know, those are the things. i got to talk to Brian Young about that, because that, interestingly, I pulled a lot of content from the Codex Egypt, Egypt book, because I didn't want so much more distraction from the Player's Handbook and the Adventure's Backpack, because it was already getting difficult to play at the table, because there's seven Codexes, or six, or whatever it is, and then the Player's Handbook, the Adventure's Backpack, Hallowed Oracle. There's so many sources where these things are coming from, I felt it was just too much, so I had him pull that stuff from the Egyptian book. However, uh, Dark Light, much as you have stated there, that has been our largest complaint on the Egyptian book. Everybody loves that book. It's a fantastic book, but it doesn't have as much playable player content. So we we may have to re revisit that. The fluff is great, but really gameable information, even in Keltarum 2, is difficult. You know, that just gave me a great idea. I think I'll sort through it on how to actually run a campaign in a mythological setting. Uh, now that's an that's a different take. That's an interesting concept. I'll mention that to Brian, a, a more of a how-to manual, uh, as opposed to just the the content. But we're going to do so. We just did Gods and Legends that just rolled out. Uh, that just rolled out not very long ago, um, and that's got a whole bunch of demi-human and humanoid gods and all of that stuff. Blah 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 blah. Um, and we're going to do. I can't remember the title. I made it. I came up with the title the other. Day. Monsters, Legends, and Monsters? Monsters and Legends? I can't remember. But it's going to be legendary monsters like Medusa, and that's the only thing I can think of, but other ones like that. <laughs> and we're going to do them full written, you know, with, with heavy write-ups, write and they're very high-level monsters. Very, very high-level monsters. Uh, One-of-a-kind type thing. So this is an interesting concept. Uh, I, like where you're, I like where you're making me go here, Darklight, where we do, we do a character class book uh, built on the mythological series that has uh, that it's uh, it's basically a, a player's handbook for the mythos series, where we have all the classes that go in the Kel the Keltaran book and the Nordic book and the Germanic book and the Slovak book and all of that other stuff. Um, I almost said Slovakum book, but <laughs> but I caught myself and said Slovak book and the Slavic book um, and whatever the hell else we've got on out there. But it would have the character classes, equipment, uh, spells, rituals. I like this. I like this concept. I like where we're going with this. One of the things that bothered me with the 5e is that optional class rules were in the PHB and not the DMG. It created an expectation in my newer players that the optional rules weren't optional and got all bent out of shape when I didn't use those options. That's that's kind of a, a, an issue. I think I think we put wording in there uh, to that effect that this these are optional uh, if your CK allows. I think we did. This is great news, Mystical Companions Book of Familiars. Yeah, I really want that content back back into game, and I want it more playable. Uh, great damn news on Mystical Companions it makes Adventures Back Every even more worthy. Yeah, it really fleshes. It's, I had this thought the other day. I was, uh, I, was looking, I don't know why I was looking at that book. 
I think it was the, the Rogue. There was something about the Rogue. I love the Rogue's familiar and the Mystical Companions. It's a shadow, basically. I think that's fantastic. Um, but uh, it was just so complicated. I thought, this doesn't fit. This doesn't fit how fast I like to run games. So this has got to be fixed. And I thought, well, if I fix it and shrink it, I'm going to have, I'm going to end up with 13 or 14 pages of content. What the hell to do with this content? I thought, holy shit, it's got to go the Inventor's Backpack. So that's where it's going to land. Uh, and I'm, I'm, I'm stoked on that. And that actually led to a comment I made. Um, for those of you who do follow us on Patreon, we have a, a supporters Discord channel that we've begun talking on. Uh, and I made a comment there about... Um, starting to work on the high level for the Adventures Backpack. Because now, by including the Mystical Companions into the Adventures Backpack, we've got enough content to more than justify, you know, doing that book again. Because uh, it's going to have a bunch, uh, just a ton of new content. So, um, it, I'm just, I'm stoked on that all the way around. Um, uh, let's see, I've tried to use that book multiple times and end up not, because it's just, you're right, it's just too much. My players love having pets. The current group all have dogs along with a, a retinue of horses and mules. They love a book that let them uh, level their animals up along with along with them. So the word dog. Yeah, and I'm going to have to figure out. So basically, Max Kaladin is talking about leveling up and all of this other stuff with animals. I'm going to have to figure out what the resurrection rules are too because uh, I think that's going to be coming our way soon. Uh, all right. <laughs> Tim's, been, Tim's been fielding some questions on Mystical Companions too. So <laughs> he's, he's done with that as well. Uh, final call on giveaway, so we're doing the raffle here in just a minute. If you have not, please give us a follow, and we sure appreciate all the support you give us here. We, we do two shows a week here, this one and then GMTT, with more coming down the pipe uh, every week. So uh, please give us a follow if you haven't. Uh, I might have to specifically look at the Rogue Companion for one of my players to spice up the Rogue class for him. Yeah, it's really cool. Check that shadow. The sh- It's like the Rogue's shadow takes on... A life of its own. It's very badass. I, I love the concept. So yeah, check it out. I'm going to need another bookshelf. I'm not. I'm not opposed to this. There you go. That's actually. Well, that's. I'm glad that everybody is is uh, is happy about this. I'm very. You know, I, I hate creating. I, I hate releasing a book again, other than the Players Handbook, of course, just because we ran out of a print run or something. I want more content. And the Adventures Backpack. I'm so very very in love with that book. Uh, and not, I, I'm the principal author, but that's not why, because it has the content that I need at the table all the time, um, about animals, and pack carrying, how to feed a horse, just all kinds of stuff that I need because of the way I run a game, um, and, and adding the high levels for the characters, uh, for the character classes, and adding this, um, this mystical companion stuff, the familiars, essentially, I think will give it enough oomph for that, uh, and we've already got more weapons coming and all kinds of goobly goo. Will Adventures Backpack exceed Star Support and Page Count? No, it cannot. <laughs> the Adventures Backpack is pretty small. I think it's 160 pages. And we're going to yank, for those who don't know, in January we'll be, we will be releasing the Adventure Spellbook that has all the spells and all the rune spells from all sources. Uh, it's like a 300 page book, 360 page book coming out. But we're going to yank those spells out of the Adventures Backpack, which is going to clean up about 40 pages, I'm guessing, which is going to shrink this book down to about 100 pages. Um, and uh, uh, we'll add another 40 or so with this new content. So I'm, I'm, I'm super stoked on that. And, of course, we're going to do, we'll do Peter Bradley's traditional cover, and then we'll, we will do the classic cover, and then we will do a tribute cover, which will be a tribute to the Unearthed Arcana, which is what inspired this book from 150,000 years ago. Uh, yeah, so it'll probably, my guess is, Bifford, it'll land around 160 pages. That's my guess. We're trying to shrink our stuff, keep ourselves to about 150 to 160 pages, uh, but that's where that that's where that should st- stumble up. All right, somebody won. Did somebody win? I think Pond Dream won. Is that right? Very cool. Hey, Art of Mike Disney, glad you could join us, though we're signing off in just a minute, but uh, <laughs> glad you could come out. Uh, hey, uh, uh, hell yeah, lots of good TLG tidbits coming out in the stream today. Yeah, oh, we've we've actually, I gotta say, uh, the NPC Almanac is, is uh, still gumming up the works. Uh, we should be done with it this week, um, but uh, once these are done, we can get on to all of this stuff that we've been talking about for over a year. A good 18 months. Uh, Davis has already begun. He's done with his end of the NPC Almanac, so he's already deep into guilds and orders uh, and starting to tinker with his arms and armor expansion. So all kinds of good stuff around there. And then as soon as as soon as soon I'm cleared, and it'll probably be right after Christmas because of the holidays and screens and all of that stuff, 
I'm going to map out the plane book, and once the plane book is mapped out, we will be able to figure out from that comes everything. We will know where Amazing Adventures 3rd Printing, where Alfstrag, where everything else kind of falls into the publishing schedule. Uh, it's all going to center around the plane book. So super, super stoked on all of that stuff. <laughs> We're actually going to move the stream to a 4.30 to 5.30 time time slot very soon, probably right after Christmas. The 4 to 5 time slot's not... Uh, I mean, it's great, but uh, it, it's it's hard, I think, on a lot of folks. So we'll be moving that time slot very, very soon. So we're going to be raiding. Eat to surf here just a few seconds. It says to raid now, so i got to do this. Uh, I want to thank everybody for coming on out and joining the stream tonight. It's been a great stream, as always. I will be back on Thursday for GM's Tricks of the Trade. That's number 100, episode 100, or whatever the hell we're doing. Um, right now, we are going to raid Blue Box. So... Please hang around for just a few minutes, and let's dive into that. Uh, and we'll see you again on Thursday, and hopefully again next Tuesday. Uh, and join us on social media, blah, 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 all that stuff. All right, everybody. Y'all have a great rest of your week, and I'm going to hit the raid button now.